Hello everybody, here's my mama and she's going to be making her easy recipe biscuit dessert for y'all today. And here's all the ingredients, here's everything you'll need. You need the grand biscuits, the flaky ones. And uh, cherry, you can just use one or I just done a n n number of them. Here I got, I got the cherry pie filling, I got the blueberry pie filling, I got the lemon pie filling and then I thought I had strawberry but I didn't so I just cut my strawberries up and put a glaze in it because I love strawberries and then this is what you put on top of it so and I put them all in here so we can put them in containers if we don't use them all and put them up for later so and this is all you do simple easy recipe now this might scare me, it always does. So here's what we do. I hope it's hot enough. You take your biscuits. This is hot grease oil. So uh, make sure it's been on for a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it has. And I put four at a time in. I said, we always need something easy on Sundays. Because we go to Sunday school and we come home, we want to fix supper and uh, want to eat before we go back. We have to take a nap, me and Papa does. And then we go back to church at 6 o'clock. Well, we leave here about 5, 5.30. So, uh, and they always love desserts. They all want desserts all the time. So this is real simple to make and we need sugar because you roll your biscuits in sugar and you tear them apart. But let's see if I've had this on long enough. But man, Corey's been busy as a beaver before he leaves. We uh, put up signs yesterday for our um, um, hot, uh, free hot dog meal down at the church. And uh, it's supposed to be this Thursday coming. So and we're still putting up signs and uh, y'all be able to see him in it shock shock surprise <laughs> we're uh jackie but um, my son wants to get loud in there my adult son <laughs> that's what he is he's in there laughing around by something but uh anyway this is so easy and so simple and so good this is the first time I tried it. I seen it and I said, I want to try this because it looks so simple. And you can, uh, you get them golden brown. Then you turn them over. Like this. And you wait to get golden brown on that side. It'll take a few minutes so the insides will get done too. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for the insides to get done. Some of mine got done and some didn't because I made some a while ago. But uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, yeah, you got to have your grease pretty hot. And then where it's flaky, you can just tear it apart. You know, and you put your dessert and your Cool Whip on it, and it is delicious. And your sugar. So, that looks like it's a little bit white on top there. And we'll turn him back over a little bit. See about these. Let's get them golden brown, make sure they're done in the middle. If you have any other type of pie filling that you like, you could put any type of pie filling on it. Yeah. Just yeah, whatever you like. So then we'll take these out. They look done. Put them on a paper towel. And you better use a spoon with a hole in it. Okay. And we'll go ahead and stick these in there. Too. And I'll turn these down a little bit.
And if you don't like the crunchiness, the feeling of the crunchiness, you could skip the sugar part on there. Yeah. Like me personally, I don't really like the sugar part on there, but some of y'all might like that on there. So you roll them like this in the sugar. It is good if you try it with the sugar on it. Yeah, they're, they're good. The lemon, I put a little bit of sugar in my lemon because it was real, real uh, tangy. So I put a little bit of sugar in my lemon because I like sweet. I love lemon pie and stuff if it's done right. Okay, let me check these over here. We'll turn them over. Yeah, they're golden brown. We'll turn these over. And then that should do it. And then all you do is you take your biscuit and you pull it apart. Oh like this. And like I said, sometimes they want to be a little bit gooey, but uh, they settle in. But just don't get your grease too hot. Let me see about these. We'll get these out right here so they won't get too done or too brown. Then all you do is we got eight here. So I make two strawberries and it's so simple. This is all you do. And they'll continue to get done as they go along. Because a little bit of them is a little bit mushy. But I done that one, they're good. We'll put two cherries. Blueberry. We put two of those. And the berries, I believe it needs a little bit of cornstarch or something in it because it wants to run a lot. And then, of course, the two lemon. And like I said, somebody sent me some uh, containers that has the lids. It would be perfect for something leftovers like this. Yeah, we'll use those uh, containers that we showed in the last video that somebody sent. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of little square ones, so we'll use those to put these in afterwards. And we're going to go in here, and I'm going to show you the ones that I've already made. And we'll put the Cool Whip on them. They're not hot. These here are still hot. So, here's the ones that I've already made. So, and all you do is take a little bit of Cool Whip, put on the top of them. And then you have your biscuit treat here. A dessert and it's so simple so easy so when you come home for some for some from Sunday school you could fix your dinner and have you a sweet too a sweet dessert too so but they are good you can work your way in here man let me see here yeah you can work your way in here Bring, bring my Bible too. So, yeah. Yeah, my Bible, my study Bible. And see how simple? You can have uh, fix your meal or have your sandwiches when you come home. Or uh, I try to have something already done. And then I just throw it on the table and just have to fix a little something for on Sundays. And sometimes we come home, we just eat sandwiches. That's what we do most of the time because me and Papa like to take a nap. And I'm gonna push these to the side and Papa's coming. Can you 
get you a chair over there. Yes, I uh, sure can. Here's what it'll look like afterwards. Yeah. Well, it looks good. Looks yeah, I've done tried the cherry, I think it was. I tried. If y'all are still watching, make sure to like and subscribe. Yep. And just about, what is it? Seven, eight more days. Corey will be leaving for the Philippines. About two weeks. About two weeks. So he's supposed to show us why he's there and what all he's doing and the scenery that there. It looks like a beautiful place, what I've seen that she has showed. And the Lord's Corey. going with him. The Lord's going with him. Take care of him. You so. need your, your little magnifying glass. Yes. I, well, I can do it if you can't find it, if it's not in there on the thing but uh this is our prayer book we're going to be praying uh over it for the ones that's sick and afflicted and we got some people here that's uh had death in their homes we've got um people that's real sick um that uh you know we need to pray for them our pastor's uh son-in-law we really need to pray for him because he's in a bad way so the church is just upholding him in prayer you know we just have to lean on the Lord, whatever comes our way, you know. But one thing we need to do is to hold on to the Lord because we are a winner either way. Whether we stay or whether we go, if we have the Lord on our side, we are a winner either way, you know. Amen. He's, I think, a, he's a real good, real good yeah. preacher, too. Yeah, he's an anointed preacher. Corey's going to show you this. Uh, this is what we put up yesterday. He, We did take some pictures of Corey. So y'all get to see Corey putting up, signs. putting up the signs. So uh, we got three more signs to put up, and we're going to take pictures of Corey doing it, and then we're going to put them on uh, the YouTube. Yeah, we'll make a short out of it of me putting up all the signs. Yeah. And you could picture it here or pause it here, and it don't have the address on it yet, so we'll make another one with the address on it, and we'll show that one on here too. But if you have a gps you could type this into the gps type in sycamore free pentecostal church and uh it should come up yeah it's at sycamore so uh, it should come up uh, on your gps it should show it yeah but we'll once we get a little bit closer we'll make another paper with the address on it yeah just so we could show it to y'all yeah god is good he's been a blessing you know so you just need to keep holding us up in prayer. And uh, right now we're going to go to prayer over our prayer book, all, all, over all the ones that's been sick and having hardships, you know, and uh, lost, just, loved ones. lost loved ones, and ones that are sick in the hospital, whatever the need may be, you know. So we're going to pray. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to, to intercede, Lord, in yes, all these Lord, requests, the God. Lord Jesus. Ask you, Lord, to answer them, Father. Whether it be sickness, Lord, or hurt hearts, or disappointments in life, God, actually yes, heal their Jesus. hearts, heal Lord, their minds, Lord, Lord. Name, heal their bodies, God, answer the, these requests, Father, we ask it in the name of Jesus. Your word says if we pray and ask anything yes, Lord. in Jesus' name, and we believe that we're going to have what we ask, we will, we will receive it in yes. Jesus' name. We believe. That's right. Amen. Say, if we're two or three, we'll agree. It shall be. And we are agreeing, Lord, whatever your will may be, Lord Jesus. We are agreeing that you will touch, Lord Jesus, and do what needs to be done, Lord, for these people that's in desperate need of you, Lord Jesus. And if they don't know you, Lord, I pray that they come to know you, Lord, before it's eternally too late, Lord. Uh, Lord, so they'll have a brand new home, you know, to go to when it's time for them to go meet you, Lord. In your mighty name we pray, Lord. And Lord, touch our nation. It's a mess, Lord. I ask you to move upon the people, Lord. Take the hatred out of their hearts, Lord. So much meanness out there. In your name, Lord, touch our nation, Lord. Touch the people, Lord. Put a desire to want to serve you, Lord. In your mighty name, Lord, that we pray, Lord, that this all this will go away in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is. It is a mess. Yep. And the more you watch the news, it's seeing get people. You all upset. All, yeah, it'll get you all upset, and uh, you know, seeing people being so mean. But anyway, I'm going to be in uh, Luke six, and I'm going to be talking about how we're supposed to love our enemies and pray for them. 
Uh, that's what God does. He, he wants love. He wants you to show love to everybody. And once they see what you have, that, that you're full of love and peace and joy, they will want that too, you know. They're, they're watch, people are watching Christians. They're seeing. I think there's been, uh, I think about eight souls or more saved at one church. And then I seen this morning on Facebook where there was some more saved and, and getting baptized. And I said, praise the Lord for that, you know. Amen. But uh, I'm going to be in Luke 6, and I'm going to start with the 27th verse. It says, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take thy cloak also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask him not, not again, ask them not again. And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. That's kind of hard to turn the other cheek, isn't it? But that's what we're supposed to do, you know. Uh, I think that's just mean where people uh, is all the time coming against you or something. Uh, you're not to hold grudges and stuff. You just have to go on your way and pray for them, you know. It says, for if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for another again, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be you therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. I think Milton preaches this all the time, you know. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all which shall be measured to you again. Amen. And it says, Can the blind lead the blind? Oh, let me start right here. And he spoke a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thine own eye? See, we got to take care of ourselves. we got to straighten us up before we got to try to go straighten somebody else up, you know. We're supposed to go with them with love, you know, but we need to walk right too. It says, Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt tree, neither doeth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Mm. For as thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh them. And uh, it says, And why call ye Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? We're supposed to be obedient to God. He, he come down here with love and compassion for people. And that's the way we're supposed to be, you know. It says, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And that foundation and that rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. And when the floods arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon Jesus Christ. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the st storm, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. You know, God is, uh, Jesus Christ is our foundation, and that's what we are supposed to build up on is 
uh, Jesus Christ, the foundation, you know. I'm going to read a little bit in the commentary. It says, The Jews despised the Romans because they oppressed God's people. But Jesus told the people to love these enemies. These difficult teachings turned away many from him. Jesus wasn't talking about having affection, affection, I say affection uh, for enemies. He was talking about choosing a conscious attitude towards them. We're not supposed to love what they do or how mean they are, but we are to have compassion and pray for them, you know, because they are mean and they need to turn their heart towards the Lord. You can't fall into this kind of love. It takes an act of the will. Loving our enemies means setting aside violence and revenge. We're not supposed to try to get revenge because people come against us, you know, and acting in their best interest. We can have compassion for them, pray for them, and try to understand them. God loves the whole world, even though the world is in rebellion against him. Jesus tells us to follow his example. Jesus is our example, and that's what we're supposed to follow. By loving our enemies, grant your enemies the same respect and rights you desire for yourself. A forgiving spirit demonstrates that a person has received God's forgiveness. Jesus described the using the picture of measuring grain in a basket. If we are critical rather than compassionate, we will also receive criticism. If we treat others generously, graciously, and compassionately, however, this treatment will come back to us in full measure. We are to love others, not to judge them. I've seen something else over here. Oh, it says, make sure you're following the right teachers and leaders because you will go no further than they do. Look for leaders who will show you more about faith and whose guidance you can trust. Jesus reminds us that our speech and actions reveal our true undefined beliefs, attitudes, and motivations. The good impressions we try to make cannot last if we are being deceit deceitful. Yeah, a deceitful person can put on an act for a little while, but that's all. After a little while, he, his true colors will come out. Your heart reveals itself in your speech and your behavior. Why would someone build a house without a foundation? Perhaps to save time and avoid the hard work of pre preparing the stone, possibly because waterfront scenery is more attractive or because beach houses represent a higher social status than cliff houses, perhaps because they want to join their friends who have already settled in sandy areas, maybe because they haven't heard about the violent storms coming because they have discontented the, discounted the reports or because they think disaster can't happen to them. A lot of people think that, don't they? They, they know Jesus is coming. They hear us talk about it all the time. But they'll say, no, not my time. It's not going to happen. That's, I've heard that for years. But they're going to find out one day. Whatever their reason, those with no foundation are short-sighted and they will be sorry. Obeying God is like building a house on a strong, solid foundation that stands firm with, when storms come. When life is calm and foundations don't seem to matter, but when crises come, our foundations are tested. Be sure your life is built on the solid foundation of knowing and trusting Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what we have to do. We have to be founded on Jesus Christ. So when troubles come our way, storms come our way, and we don't understand why, and we get disheartened, hold on to God because he'll bring you through it no matter what it is, you know. I love the Lord. I thank him for his love and his mercy for me, you know. I love y'all. I thank y'all for everything that y'all do for us, you know. Uh, I thank God for Milton, for God giving him to me because when I was a little girl, I always wanted uh, a boyfriend that took me to church. Well, he's the only one that took me, which I only had three boyfriends, but he's the only one that ever took me to church, you know. I thank God for that. God showed me he was the one. God is good. He's good to everybody. Amen. Here's me and I'll shut up. Yeah, she's trying to give me a big head. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> God's good. No, I think it's an honor to have a wife that goes to church and loves Jesus. And, you know, then you've got, you got full trust. You know, everything's going to be all right. You know, she's going to work every, all things for your good. Yeah. That's the way a, a true wife is. And a husband, he's going to work all things for her good. Yeah. You know, when you get married, you love one another, and you deny everybody else. Yep. And you two become one. Yep. And you hold on to God. We've been 56 years so far. 
holding on. <laughs> I thought it was 55. No, 56. Okay, 56. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read a little bit Matthew, the fifth chapter, starting at the 43rd verse. This is all read. So this is uh, road in red. This is Jesus pre uh, preaching and teaching. And we need to take heed. And this whole Bible, I think about all of Matthew's read of, uh, Jesus, it's, it's Jesus teaching and talking. Yeah. Says, ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? <clears throat> Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. You know, you're supposed to not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing when you're doing for God. Yeah. You, you do it to get glory or get people to look at you. You know, that's that's all reward you get. That's but it. Yeah. I want to get my reward from God. That's right. Amen. I want to go to heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be secret, be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, or for they love to pray, standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Yeah. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when thou ye pray, Ye use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that the, they shall be heard of their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of right, before amen. ye ask. You know, and he does, but he also wants us to ask. Mm -hmm. God knows what we need, but he's not just going to automatically give it to you. It, but a lot of times he does. Yeah. But he wants you to ask, and then he wants you to give thanks. Yeah. For him answering your, right. Amen. your prayers and your requests. He uh, he he don't like being second fiddle. He wants to be first. You know, when you pray and you ask God to do something other, and He answers your prayer, you need to also testify and give Him the praise and yeah. the glory. But we can't do nothing. I'm gonna skip down here to verse 14 on the. I'm over in chapter six now of uh, Matthew said for if ye forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if ye forgive not men their trespasses neither will your father forgive you your trespasses think about that it's very important you know people we all been done wrong but yeah. it, it's very important that we forgive them because God you know we've all done wrong we're all guilty and when we ask God to forgive us, He does. And He expects us to forgive those who've done us wrong. That's right, amen. And, and here's what He said, If ye do not, if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So there's a whole lot rested on forgiveness. We need to forgive. You know, God, God loves us, and He's always standing there with His hands stretched out wanting to do for you and forgive you and lift you up, build you, give you good health. 
but he expects us to forgive those who trespass against right. us. Right. And when we forgive them, we don't help them. When we forgive them, we just clear, clear it up our religion and our relationship with God. And we, our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we're ready to go to heaven if we forgive. Mm -hmm. But if we don't forgive, it could be erased out. Yeah. Praise God. If, if you don't forgive, he won't forgive you. That's in red. Jesus said this. It's very important. No matter, you know, they don't, they're don't. they not worthy to be forgiven. They're not asking for forgiveness. But if you forgive them anyway, and let's go on. But like water on a duck's back. It just runs off and don't penetrate. All that should just run off of you and you go on, love everybody. You don't have to have nothing to do with people that that's stabbed you in the back or done your own, but you have to forgive them. And and go if, on. And if you don't forgive them, it builds up in you like a cancer or something. Yeah, it just builds it up and you start hating people, don't you? Yeah, it, it, it's a, yeah, it give you ulcers, cause yeah. you to die young. Yeah. That's right. Forgive and go on. Have a, have a heart that pleases God, and, and that is to have a loving heart. And to yeah. forgive others when they do you wrong. That's right. You know, and that's you know, it's easy to say, but you know, it, if you got your mind made up, it's easy to do. You just forgive them and go on, love everybody. Yeah. You know, because we're going to heaven, and I want to make sure that I, I go to heaven. And I see each one of y'all there too. You know, yeah. God is so good. Let's, he is. Let's practice God's word. Amen. Right down to. Dotting, dotting of the I and crossing of the T. Wait right. down to us practice it and live according to God's word. Yeah. And I, I pray I've said something to help you. You know, God is so awesome. He loves us and he wants us all to be with him one yeah. day in paradise. And he's with us all the time now. He's in yeah. our heart, in our mind, in our thoughts. He's, he's right there. Us, he's yeah. right there. He's closer than a brother. Yeah. Right there. Praise God. I love you. Thank God yeah, for and, you. and if you mess up, I mean, all of us mess up time. We might say something, get mad at our kids or something, but just say, Lord, forgive me and help me to do better. And he will. Amen. You know, and you go on with him. That's just don't right. throw up your hands and say, well, I messed up. No, you say, forgive me, God, and you go on and God forgives you. Yeah, we you have to remember that the devil is out to get us all. And he he's a, he battles our mind. He's yeah. principality of the air. And he can put thoughts in your mind. And you think it's you thinking them. But your your mind to pick right up on it, and then the next thing you know, you got hate and, and envy and spite. Well, that's of Satan. Yeah. And God is love. He wants us to be like that. But yeah. try to be like him, like Jesus was. Yeah. Yeah. He forgave him as he was crucified, crucifying him. Yeah. Lord Jesus, I yeah, pray. Yeah. on the cross, forgive him. Yeah. Amen. They know not what that, they do. Yeah. Let's do all we can to please him. Yeah. Because one day we're gonna be with him in paradise. Yeah. Praise God. So y'all have a good day if you go to church after a while. I hope you can. If you can't, then, you know, read his word or watch somebody on TV or Facebook or YouTube or whatever, you know. Uh, but just stay in the word and talk to Jesus. I don't think we tried these, did we, for the oh, people? That looked to me like cholesterol. <laughs> what it looked like to me like. <laughs> cholesterol. Looked like sugar. Yeah. See here? You want to? Yeah, I'll I take That's it. That's strawberry. You oh, want strawberry yeah. cherry? Yeah, I'll take it. Lord, thank you. I taste them all the time. Yeah, so it's your do. turn. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring a napkin in here. Oh, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. You didn't get it all over you. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're good, ain't they? Mm -hmm. And they're just biscuits and pie filling and Cool Whip. How simple can that be? Couldn't be no better, I'll tell you that. Yep. Just like God. He's Amen. so good to us. Thank you, Lord. All the time. He's good to us all the time. Yes. Y'all have a good day. We love y'all. We're praying for you. Y'all pray for us, too. We're going to miss uh, Corey terribly, but y'all pray that he hurries up and gets over and gets ha married to his a, uh, pretty little girl. And uh, she is pretty, too. And, and has a safe trip. And, and they'll be uh, faithful and true to God, and that way they'll be faithful and true to each other. That's right. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. That's all for this one, and we love y'all. God bless y'all, and we'll see y'all in the next one. Amen.